let's take a look at the Fama French three-factor model. So if you're watching this video, you should be familiar with the traditional capital asset pricing model, which says that the expected return for security I equals the risk-free rate plus beta I times the market risk premium, which is just the expected return on the market minus the risk-free rate. Now, this was a popular model for a very long time, but a lot of empirical research found that there were other factors that drove market returns. So Fama and French developed a three-factor model, and here's how they estimate it. So they subtract out the risk-free rate. So the return of security I in time period T minus the risk-free rate, so the market risk premium, or the excess return here, I should say, not the risk premium equals alpha i, which is the intercept when we do a regression, plus the sensitivity of the stock's returns or these assets' returns to the market risk premium, plus the sensitivity to something called SMB, plus the sensitivity times something called HML. So SMB is something that Fama and French constructed. It's a it's a portfolio of small stocks and a portfolio of big stocks, and they subtracted the returns from the two portfolios. So it stands for small minus big. That's what the SMB stands for. HML, they tried to capture the value versus growth phenomenon that was seen in some of this research. So what they did is they looked at the high book to market ratio stocks that were value stocks because their book value is greater than their market value. Uh, uh, the ratio of book to market was very high minus the return of a portfolio of stocks with low book to market ratios which are growth stocks and that HML stands for high minus low. So if we take a look um, and recap this in the cap M only the market index matters. In the Fama French three-factor model, there are three factors, of course. First is the market index, which is expected, expected to capture the systematic risk from macroeconomic factors. The small minus big factor, which is based on empirical observations that size of the firm matters in stock returns. And the high minus low, which again is based on empirical observations, which is meant to capture the book-to-market ratio, which looks at um, whether stock is undervalued or growth versus value. So how did they create these portfolios? What they did is they have their uh, portfolio of stocks and what they did is they found the median market equity. And the median market equity was the dividing line between small and big stocks. So there are no mid-cap stocks here. They're either big or they're small. If you're smaller than the median value, you're, you're small. If you're larger than the median value, then you're considered a big stock. They also rank the portfolios based on um, book equity to market equity. And they looked at the 70th percentile and the 30th percentile. So the top 30% are considered value stocks or the top 30 yeah the top 30 percent are considered value stocks the bottom 30 percent are considered growth stocks and in between that 60 percent are considered neutral so had they form their portfolios so the small minus big is they just average all the small stocks here all the um, small value small neutral small growth add, added them up and divided by three for the value, they did the same. For the big stocks, they just added them all up. Big value, big neutral, big growth, and divided by three. So they have the average for the uh, returns for the uh, small stocks and the average return for the big stocks. And they subtract the big from the small to get small minus big. For the high minus low, they ignore the middle 60%. So they only look at the small value and the small growth and they multiply or they divide by two, right? So they get the average of these returns and they do the same thing um, with growth, okay? Small growth 
and big growth. So small growth plus big growth divided by two or multiplied by a half gives our, us our, our low book to market and small value plus big value divided by two gives us our um, our value or our high book to uh, market ratio, right? And they subtract the two. Um, the size break point for each year is the end of June in year T. So that's the way it's calculated. Um, and what they do is BE over ME for for June of the year is the T book uh, equity for the last fiscal year and in T minus one divided by the market equity for December T minus one. So, you know, it's kind of, um, would be kind of tedious if you had to calculate this yourself, but fortunately, this is calculated for you. So Ken French, the French of Fama French, he maintains on his website the whole database of this information. Okay, so if you wanted to actually estimate that Fama French three-factor model, you would need some stock price data, uh, either for a company or for a mutual fund, and you can get that from Yahoo Finance. And you can also get all of these factors from Ken French's website. And I just want to note, and I will show you the data in a minute, uh, the numbers reported by French are in whole numbers. So 1.25 for 1.25%. So what you need to do is adjust by dividing by 100. And we'll do that in a second. All right, so for example, suppose I want to get Apple. I want to look at Apple's, um, estimate uh, the factors in the three-factor model for Apple. So the ticker is APPL. So I type that in. And what do I get here? Okay, I get all this information from Yahoo Finance, uh, PE ratios, beta, beta is 1.19. And I can look at historical data and I'm able to get the stock price data. And some of you may have done this before. You can get daily, weekly, or monthly, and you can set the time period that you want. And let's say I want five years of data. I can do that and I can hit apply and it converts it. And then I can download the information. When I download it, it becomes a, a CSV file, which you can open in Excel and which will look just like this. I've downloaded it already to sort of keep the video a little bit shorter, but this is the information you'll get. You'll get the date, open, you know, high, low, close, adjusted close, volume, etc. Okay, what we need is we need returns. So you can compute the return, and I have the formula here, by looking at the price and time period T divided by the price and time period T minus one, minus one. And so we want to use the adjusted close, so you can actually delete all of these columns here and the volume as well, but I've just left those in so you can see what the data looks like. And once you've done that, you can then copy it down. And if you're not familiar with that, once you put this formula in, here I'm putting in F3 divided by F2 minus 1. And you'll notice that I have uh, data for December 1st of, or December of 1999, because I want to start with uh, 2000. All right, actually, when I run this regression, I'm only going to use uh, five years of data, but I've collected um, from 2000 here. So you calculate that return, and to copy it down, you have this cursor, which is sort of a three-dimensional plus sign. If you move over that little box there, you get a two-dimensional plus sign, and you can just drag it down, and it will copy the formula. So what I did here is, is these are based on a formula. So if I wanted to copy it to a different spreadsheet or a different worksheet, um, it wouldn't work well unless I had all this data because it's looking for formulas to calculate. So what I did is I copied, so you can copy, and when you paste it, instead of pasting as you normally would, you can paste, see the one, two, three, I don't know how well you can see it, that'll paste the actual number. So now these are all just numbers here. It keeps all the, the decimal places, or it keeps, you know, keeps all the information, but 
I've also clicked on the percent sign and then you can change the number of decimal places. So I'm going to leave it at two decimal places here, but these are actual numbers, so I can copy them into another spreadsheet. All right, let's get the uh, FAMA French data. So here we go to Ken French's website, and he has a multitude of data. Okay, he has his three-factor uh, three data. He has portfolios formed on size. He has quite a bit of data here. All right, and there's details that describe um, how the portfolios are formed, which I, I discussed already. So again, what would you do? You would click the CSV file and download it. All right, I've done that already again. And then you just open the CSV file and it'll look like this. This is, this is what you'll get. All right, the way they code the data is the way the CRISP um, data is coded. Um, 1926 is 192607, so that's July of um, 26, etc. Now, notice that this is 2.96%, but when we did Apple, we had it this way, right? Not as a whole number, but it was a decimal, and then we converted it to um, um, a percentage. So, what you want to do is you want to convert this. So, I've done that again. You convert the raw data by dividing by 100, and I don't know how well you can see this here, but it says B2, which is right here, divided by 100. And then I just copied the formula across and then hit the percent sign and um, changed the uh, number of decimal places to 2. Okay, and when you do it, uh, oftentimes it'll just show you, well, probably would have been fine here. Okay, but in some cases, maybe you don't have enough decimal places. So I've copied that down. So I have this whole data set. It goes back to 1926. So what I want to do is I want to run the regression. So I've copied this into a spreadsheet. And I'm going to do uh, January of 2017 to December of 2021. So five years of monthly data. So I have these factors, which were in the French data. I have this factor, which is in the Apple return data I calculated. But to estimate the model, we need the excess return. So what I've done is I've taken Apple's return, which is an F8, and subtracted the risk-free rate here, which is an E8. And again, I've copied it down. So I want to run the regression. So the first thing I did, actually, and I did it in a previous video, is I estimated alpha and beta. So I only used the market risk premium factor. And I got this estimate here. And I got a beta of 1.139 or 1.14. So pretty close to the 1.19 we saw in um, on Yahoo Finance. And remember, I'm using a slightly different sample period. So that looks pretty good. Um, if the cap M holds, this intercept term in the regression, if I can make this a little bigger, um, should actually be zero or statistically insignificant. And it's got a p-value of 0 0.0505, so a little above the 5% threshold we oftentimes use, but um, well below the 10% that sometimes is used. So it seems that this model is not picking up something in the return process. So let's see if we can estimate the um, three-factor model. So what am I going to do here? All right, I can use, I can click on the data tab here, and here it says data analysis. If you don't have this tool pack, you can install it by going to File, Options, Add-ins, and then Excel add-ins, click Go, and this comes up, and up here it says Analysis Tool Pack. You see I have it checked off. If it's not checked off, check it off and click OK, and then you'll see it up here um, when you go to the data, data tab. So you click this on, and there's a lot of different analyses. It will do ANOVA, Descriptive Statistics, Exponential Smoothing. We want to do Regression. So I'm going to click OK here. And what I want to do is I want to highlight 
the, and so I'll just do this directly. I'm going to highlight these returns, the excess returns. And for the X range, or the independent variables, I'm going to use these three factors. And you'll notice I clicked on the labels at the top. And when you do that, and you have this block checked labels, when you run the regression, it will then tell you what um, each of the you know independent variables was, which, since we have three, makes it a little nicer to look at. It opens in a new tab. Let me see if I can um, expand the columns here, make it a little more readable. And so what do we have here? So we get a little different beta here. Let me see if I can make this a little bit bigger. So the market risk premium, or the beta here, is 1.3, t-value of 7, so clearly significant. This is... Uh, something raised 1.9 raised 10 to the minus 9 power so okay quite a few zeros in there the small minus big is negative all right this is a big company stock but it is not statistically significant but the high minus low again is negative uh, Apple has generally not been considered a value stock. It's been considered a growth stock, and it is significant. So it seems to be picking up some of the factors because the intercept term is now um, outside, or our p-value is 0.228, so well above the 0.05 threshold we usually use, or even 0.10 threshold. So pretty easy to estimate the Fama French three-factor model thanks to Ken French who's made that data available and also Yahoo Finance which makes it easy to find stock price data or um, um, mutual fund price data you just have to convert it into returns and you can do this in Excel quite easily